Welcome back. We are moving on to the punch. Major headline, cholera. Death toll rises to 37 as Lagos records 401 cases. We've taken that story. Federal government probes 2.7 trillion Naira subsidy debts and list Auditor General. Naira slump loan pushed public debt to 121 trillion Naira, the DMO. Protesters demand error of ICE trial for alleged 423 billion Naira theft. Lagos APC mourns member as Hajj debt crossed 1,000. Otedala raises FBNH stake with over 18 billion Naira shares. Now, what stories do we have in the point? Um, federal government has begun the 2.7 trillion subsidy mm -hmm. uh, debt probe. So they say the federal government <clears throat> uh, employed the services of KPMG to mm -hmm. conduct uh, an initial audit of 6 trillion um, owed to NMPCL as claimed by them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from that audit, they had reduced the claims from 6 trillion to 2.7 trillion. Oh. Anyways, uh, let me just give you a little background. They said on May 30th, we remember hours after the subsidy gone declaration by the mm -hmm. president, mm -hmm. we had NMPCL Group Chief Executive Officer Mele Kiari. He had said that uh, NMPCL had footed petrol subsidy bills from its own cash flow, mm. and that so far, government has been unable to pay, pay back, back the 2.8 trillion. And um, um, so that was when government now decided to audit, and they say that, um, that they've had a meeting, they had a FAC meeting, and so from the, uh, the result of that meeting, they will let us know what they have come up with. But first of all, the initial claims of six trillion has been reduced to 2.7. Mm. So they will do all that audit, and then we'll find out exactly how much is owed NMPCL. And then government needs to also start discussing how they would pay, pay back, back for that. So the so forensic, well, forensic audit is going on. Yeah, we, I don't believe they are owing them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some well, which other stories do we have? So I have the Lagos <clears throat> APC months member as hard debts cross 1,000. And I said the Lagos chapter of um, APC has described the death of welfare secretary mm. Elijah Ramata Bankole as unfortunate and shocking. So, so, so yeah, when you go for Hajj, the heat, they said the heat there was, was, so, was so much and, mm. and you know, they give visas to a lot of people. There are a lot of people that come together. It's very crowded. I remember when I went, yes, I remember when I went for Hajj, I was, my legs were practically not touching, they were not touching the ground. They were I was walking, like, people. I'm telling you, because Ooh. of how, you know, crowded the, crowded the places yeah. and all. So, yes, they are describing her death and it's unfortunate. May her soul rest in gentle. Amen. So, we have a story? Yes, I have the story of um, FUNAB students protesting the death of their colleagues. So, the um, story is inside the papers. Ayodele, who, um, was, who died, <coughs> his um, death has led many of his fellow students to storm the campus on Thursday and they were demonstrating over the fact that the medical center within the school is not in good condition. Mm. Um, some of the students <coughs> on condition of um, anonymity said that this, the diseased um, treatment was delayed by the healthcare officer on duty because they could not provide identity card, mm. said that um, the protest was, they are staging this protest to advocate a better structure and restructure the healthcare system on campus said the staff are negligent and their attitude is very irritating, that they will not attend to emergencies, that the boy got there at 1 p.m., but he didn't get any treatment until 6.50. He was oh. proclaimed dead by 10 p.m. that same day, and it was oh, because wow. he didn't take his ID card along yet. It was an emergency situation oh. and that they're advocating for change. That This is the third time it is happening, that it's been reoccurring, that people will be, that um, um, the poor, that the negligence and poor service being rendered within the university, that's FUNAB, has led to loss of lives and mm. the school uh, st students are protesting that they want to protest against this poor service. They want Ayodele's death to signify a major change in how they will be taking care of that. He was unconscious when he was taken to the hospital. You're mm. asking someone that is unconscious, unconscious, not feeling too well, that he should bring his ID, ID card, card. Oh, where his friend is supposed to bring his ID card. Hey, and then this thing is later very they common. found out that he was dead because it, the treatment didn't come in time. So My um, first. The, the friends can go back and want to look for his oh, ID card. Why we? Oh. Mm. It's, it, they you might know, also feel concerned that some other young people are coming into the school to get treated without being students of the school. But well, that's not the case. So, yes, you know, just, but yeah, also, just you first. know, recently there's a friend of mine, there's a case where it took someone who was stabbed to the hospital and nobody has been able to pay the bill. So he's oh. in the hospital. The hospital has treated him. Oh, but nobody's nobody coming to pay the bills. Oh. 
So the this is what the hospital so feel like they have to deal with all the all terrible the things. Life first. David. Life first. Yes. Okay, let's move on now to the Vanguard. A major headline, cholera with taking that death toll hits 21 in Lagos, 401 cases recorded. Reverse crisis, siege to local government areas won't deter us for Barra. Insecurity, jihadists flooding Nigeria through Benin Republic. 423 billion naira indictment. Protesters march in Kaduna want EFCC's proof of El Rufai. Kanu governor, government kicks as court removes Sanusi Emir. Federal government seeks 18 month extension of 800 million US dollars World Bank palliative scheme. What stories do we have in the Vanguard? <clears throat> so I took a story inside. Uh, that's uh, the Kaduna police. Uh, they said the police operatives in Kaduna State have arrested five notorious kidnapping suspects, a suspected car thief, and recovered the Toyota Land Cruiser. The State Commission of Police has ordered continued clampdown on kidnappers and their informants in the state. The spokesperson of the State Police Command, Mansiru Hassan, uh, in a statement yesterday said that about um, 6 10 um, p.m., the Divisional Police Officers, DP of the Meigana, received an intelligence from a concerned citizen regarding a group of kidnappers planning to collect ransom money from the relatives of their victim. So they acted swiftly and uh, mobilized the patrol team and some members of the local vigilante group to the location. The operation resulted in successful arrest of the suspects, and they mentioned their names, Shuaibu Bala, 23 years old, uh, from Malanta Gimba village. Uh, another guy, Musa, 22 years old, male from Bugal village, and, uh, you know, during the interrogation, they said they confessed to the crime and investigations are ongoing to apprehend other members of their gang. Also, in continuation of the ongoing clampdown on kidnappers and their informants within Kaduna State, uh, they also achieved another significant breakthrough. Uh, this was the 17th of June. They said they acted on uh, credible intelligence received by the DPO of TAFA. And they said some kidnappers were sighted rooming around Taffa Town. So about, um, I think, um, 7 p.m., uh, the DPO mobilized his men and surveillance team. They went into the place with uh, the Joint Tax Force of Taffa, and they were able to apprehend three suspected kidnappers. Uh, they brought them to the station. They may also mention their names, Sani Amadu, male, 17 years, Sani Lawal, 20 years, Ali wow. Usman, 22 years. So I, I mentioned their yes. ages for us so, to understand oh, yeah. how, how yes, how things have really degenerated. These are young I mean, people who should be in school. Yes. yes. Honestly, they should also <gasps> start arresting bandits that are disturbing um, the yes. uh, tomatoes, pepper, and everything. I need to take the story of teenager um, protesting against sexual harassment in Ogun State. So it's within the papers where. Um, Teenagers between 11 and 17 years in the Magboro or Bafemi Wode local government in the state. states. Preteens yeah. and teens mm. protested that um, sexual harassment and is not a compliment. That when they are walking the streets, mm. men would grab them, pull them, oh. and this is not a form of compliment. And I remember this happening to me as Growing well. Up. It was a norm when yeah, if yeah. you are on the street, boys and um, men you. would touch mm -hmm. you. And he said that um, the organizer of this particular protest was saying that the reason they're doing it is because he has gotten a lot of feedback from girls within that area that they are not free to walk. So they wore white t-shirts and oh. were working to say that the government needs to step up and speak against um, this and even find a way to deter uh, people, boys, men on the streets from touching. Yeah. You know, there must be a punishment Keep because it harassment, how do we process harassment against people on the streets? If you are very voluptuous in terms of shape, you are more prone to so that, uh, that attack yeah. and harassment. Please, yeah. let's, let's do something about this. Uh, do we have uh, stories in the Tribune? Yes, I do. Okay, so um, let me quickly take the stories we haven't taken. Uh, court nullifies creation of 33 local government areas in Ondo State. We've taken that. Government kidnap pregnant woman in Ogun. We've taken that. Sanu Nasugi federal government two weeks to pay four months with health salaries. Is that what you have? Yes, that's okay, what I have. So the, the Joint Action Committee of the Non-Academic Staff Union of Educational and Associated Institutions, Nasu, Sanu, um, have threatened that they will shut down universities and inter-university centers if the government fails to pay their withheld salaries at the expiration of the two weeks ultimatum um, they have sent. They said that they wish to express their regret and dismay that up to date their salaries have been withheld, not mm. paid to their members, and there's been a silence 
you know, nothing has been said, it's just silence. So uh, from the stories that they've been, you know, they have been, they ha they've had series of meetings back and forth, agreements, whatever, and then silence. And so they view this as an act of insincer insincer insincerity and neglect on the part of government. Mm. And that, you know, this has been causing a um, lot of contention amongst them, you know. You know how we can be now. Somebody says, somebody don't chop money. Yeah. yeah, that's why. <laughs> and so they're saying, they're asking that immediate payment of four months' salary that has, been, that has been withheld to their members to be paid within two weeks from the date of this particular um, letter. Mm -hmm. And if nothing is done at the expiration of their ultimatum, they're shutting down universities and entering university centers. Yes, they are not ASU, but we know how important their role is. Yeah, they are the yeah, all important. So role. please, listen to them and pay them their money. What's happening? <laughs> All right, ladies, that's all we can take on the newspaper reviews. When we return, we look into the top stories of today. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.